That's one thing I would have never have imagined or thought about. This is new. This is something that I've been thinking about for a long time. I have uh, Jess Kokovia here. She is uh, newly engaged. Very newly. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank and you. Um, she, she reached out to me and asked me about weddings. Um, how did you discover me? Um, so I've literally been seeing you everywhere, all over my TikTok, um, even before I was engaged. And I kind of just kept your profile there on the side. I was like, oh, he seems like a good guy to kind of get in contact with if I ever get engaged. <laughs> and then here we are. And yeah, I just reached out to you and you're super approachable. So here we awesome. are. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, with my what, what's happening in the future, I'm, I'm leaning away from weddings because of the fact that I did this so well, you, what you just, just described. And uh, I'm happy to help you along the way mm -hmm. and guide you and give you some strategy, some consulting um, and answer any of your questions specifically today and beyond. Now, you're thinking about getting married 2024, 2025? Yeah, either end of 2024 or start of 2025. Haven't yeah. really started planning or anything yet because I'm completely new. Don't know yeah. where to start. <laughs> yeah. Now, when you going back to when you first discovered me uh, and you realised I was a wedding photographer, mm -hmm. how did you know I was a wedding photographer? Um, it was just mainly from your TikToks. Um, you kind of advertising yourself as a wedding photographer um, and then just the comedy that you had in your TikToks and everything really stood out to me as like a really easy, approachable kind of guy, fun kind of guy that you'd want at your wedding. Excellent. <laughs> Pretty Excellent. much, yeah. And were there any other specific standouts from other wedding photographers or anything to do with weddings up until now? Yeah, it was just more like your attitude towards everything. Um, kind of made it all seem really easy and really relaxed not so uptight than any other like wedding coordinator or photographer or as such. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're definitely in that like vibe, in that yeah. in that target audience yeah. that I would love. Yeah. Um, are there any other vendors that have st uh, stuck out to you when over the last like kind of few months before you got engaged even? Not really. Yeah, not really. Like you were the only one that really kind of stood out. So I planted um, the seed before you even knew. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, it Amazing. was like months before I got engaged and then my For You page just started blowing up, obviously, after I got engaged. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just like everything to do with wedding. But, yeah, you really stood out. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's good. That's good. And um, with, with that, now that you are engaged, are there any other vendors that you've like researched or have stood out now that the algorithm is pushing someone? Um, not Overly, um, there's been like a few, I'd say like uh, venues and stuff like that, but not so much yep. wedding coordinators or vendors or anything like that. Um, I keep seeing your videos everywhere. That's what keeps like okay. pushing, going all yeah. over. Yeah, my For You page is all of your videos, even like not so much your wedding stuff either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was my next question. Yeah. Um, when you first discovered me, it wasn't even wedding related, was it? No, yeah, yeah. So it was literally just your page and then I started seeing more and more of it and, yeah, it was just really weird. <laughs> so you followed the brand before you even knew what I did? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and then it was a natural fit afterwards yeah. because had I built that rapport, built yeah. that kind of yeah. trust sort of even before we met? Um, I mean, we hadn't got in contact. I kind of just got in contact with you via your Instagram. Um, I'd always liked your videos and stuff like that, but never got in contact with you directly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That's, that's awesome to see. It's yeah. like, it's really good, like uh, proof of concept of what I've been doing for the last three years, having someone say, say that yeah. firsthand. So... How did you, how did he, uh, how did your now fiance uh, propose to you? Um, so it was pretty special. It was very special. It was very, um, very surprised. Um, but it was on our five year anniversary. Um, we went down to Leighton Beach, and Leighton Beach is already special because that's where we had our first few dates and things like that. Um, and then he had this like picnic set up. 
And I was in a bit of a foul mood because it was like right after work, it was midweek and I was just like, I'm so tired. Let's just do something really chill. So we're like, okay, let's just do fish and chips on the beach. And then, yeah, we were meant to go to Coogee because that's our local. And then he took a wrong turn and I was like, where are you going? Like, he was like, I'm going to Leyden. It's really nice beach. I was like, oh, can we just go to Coogee? Like, why do we have to go all the way to Leyden? <laughs> and then he's just like, we're just going there. I was like, okay, all right, all right. <laughs> and then, yeah, when we got there, there was like this whole picnic set up. Um, like he had obviously got someone to set it up like from Instagram or something like that. Yeah. Um, Cause there was these two girls there and they were like, oh, like enjoy. And they didn't say anything. And I didn't think anything. I just immediately thought he did it for our five-year anniversary. And I was yes. like, oh, that's really cute. He covered it well. Yeah, yeah, he thought he thought well. So I was like, oh, that's really cute. But I was so hungry because I just come home from work, <laughs> come back from work. Classic. And I was just like, all right, let's eat. He's just like, wait, 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 just a second. And I was just like, oh, like, come on. What now? <laughs> yeah. And then, um, yeah, he was just like, oh, can you take a photo of the setup for my mum? I was like, yeah, okay, sure. And then got his phone and then I turned around and then that's when he was like, on his knee and everything. And I was just like, whoa, <laughs> hang on a minute, what is going on? Um, and then, yeah, I thought I'd cry, but tears welled up, but I was just so shocked. <laughs> so shocked. Amazing. So, amazing. Yeah, it was really good. So you hid that really well good. throughout the time yes. leading up to the day? Yes. Yeah, very amazing. much so. Like we'd always talked about it and things like that, but just never expected it. Yeah. Love that. Well yeah. done. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Thank Did you. it. No Thank hesitations. <laughs> no, no, not at all. All right. So now you have the burden of uh, planning your wedding. Yes. yes. Apart from contacting me, what else have you done? Um, so, I mean, we've kind of looked at our engagement, yep. booked that. Yeah. Um, so we've just booked a venue and like bartenders because um, we've booked it at like an empty kind of venue and then we have to do everything. The so DIY we, special? Yeah. Yep. We That's always a good everything. time. Oh, it's stressful. It's so <laughs> stressful. <laughs> so anything to make it easier. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've literally only just booked the venue for November and that's it. Oh. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. <laughs> so in terms of, uh, and now I'm just going to flow some information mm -hmm. for you. In yeah. terms of engagement parties, mm -hmm. uh, one of the questions that I kind of uh, have have for over the last few years is engagement party guests, are they going to be the same as the ones that get invited to the wedding? Are they auto invites? Yes. So... I mean, we've crunched the numbers and it's looking at around the 180 mark. Okay. Which is huge. Yep. Um, so ideally we want to cut it back. So our thought process was having a big engagement, having yep. like a big party, inviting absolutely everyone um, and then having a more smaller, intimate, personal wedding. Mm -hmm. um, that's our kind of thought process at the moment. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's, that's quite popular these yeah. days. Your last name, where is that from? Uh, Italy. Italy. Yes. So does that mean you have a lot of Italian family ready to come and... Actually, no, Ooh. surprisingly. Wow. Um, most of our relatives are here, like most of our close relatives. It's That's good. It's more our distant relatives mm. that are over in Italy. Um, most of them don't even speak English and I unfortunately don't speak Italian. So. <laughs> well, that, that cuts a lot of them out. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, he's actually got a bigger family than us. Oh. Yes. Where's he from? Um, so English and Scottish. Oh, okay. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Big family. <laughs> All right. So engagement party, you're looking at less than 180? Yeah. Yeah. And a lot less for your wedding. Yes. Correct. Okay, cool. Yeah. Ideally, on average, we tend to, I tend to go with between 60 to 100 people. Yeah. The ones more than that, um, it becomes a real formal, real yeah. sort of official mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, and again, this is from my observation, my experience. I don't speak on behalf of the entire wedding industry. Um, but you... You came to me and talked to me about uh, how, how viably I am mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, all the things. I come in and um, I look like I'm going to have fun and yeah. I'm going to be a fun person at a wedding. And that's the sort of weddings that I go for. Yeah. And that's why I express myself like that because I attract that sort of client. Now, with your wedding day, are you thinking about having more cocktail or more sit down for reception? I like the idea of sit down. I really do. Um yeah, I only kind of want to sit down for the meal part and I want 
everyone up and dancing after the meals and everything like that. Yep. So I still want that like kind of official sit down but not as formal. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So still fun. Okay. okay. <laughs> still that bit of fun, yeah. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So – and that comes back to, you know, you can have your cocktail because they bring out the food and you can grab your plate and you can have a sit yeah. and you can have couches, furniture yeah. and things like that. But when it comes to tables where your seat's allocated, it really also depends on your demographic of yeah. age. Yeah. So if you have older people, they tend to sit down more. But if they want a boogie, mm -hmm. then they'll do it. Yeah. Um, you just don't want uh, a whole bunch of people just sitting down the whole time because they don't know each other. So there's a whole different bunch of strategies you can go for there. And this is where a wedding planner really comes in. Now, in terms of um, the guest list, you've probably thought about it over and over. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for your wedding day? Um, yeah. We're kind of basing our like engagement and our wedding day, we're just cutting out a few like friends as such yeah. we've um put the put the marker down on definites for like family and things like that okay it's more so cutting back friends all right i'll help you with the yeah. rule rule of thumb yes have you spoken to these friends inside of six months yes that's and, the problem <laughs> and, and and how many of how many times have yeah. you spoken to them in the six months yeah if it's once cut them out mm -hmm. right and have you spoken to them versus have they spoken to you, right? Mm -hmm. This is your wedding day. Yeah. Nobody else's. If they don't get invited to it but they also didn't invite you to their wedding, would you be a bit uh, – would you be annoyed? Yeah. For some of them and not for some for some of them. <laughs> like, well, there you yeah, go. Well, there yeah. you go. You have a line. Yeah. So yeah. anyone that you're not sure about inviting, ask mm -hmm. yourself if they invited – if they didn't invite you to, your we uh, to their wedding mm. – would you be upset? Yeah. Would you be going, hang on, what, what, what do you mean, right? That's a good way to put it. It's a good way to put it, mm. right. And then obviously the ones you do invite, are they a couple already? Mm -hmm. Do you invite the plus one even though you haven't known the plus one for a while potentially? Uh, another rule of thumb you can go for there is has the person that you're inviting been with their plus one for longer than – I don't know, six months, 12 months, whatever you want. Yeah. If it's a fresh one, unless they're socially awkward and need someone to bring them, yeah. that's where you have to kind of decide. Yeah. Yeah. I had a whole bunch of um, friends of mine, my mates from a sneaker group that I involved with, my oldest like kind of group chat on Facebook. Half of them, I didn't know who their girlfriends even their names were, but I invited them and I'm saying, hey guys, this is one of those, we had about 80 people. Yeah. This is one of those Intimate weddings, yeah. but we're having a party. However, I'm sorry to say, but these are the, the following people. I don't know who your girlfriend even their name is. No disrespects, but we haven't hung out enough times. Yeah. But we've hung out enough, like me and the guys, enough times for me to go, you guys are in. Because it's always been the boys, the boys, yeah. the boys, right? Yeah. And, and especially if my wife didn't know who they were, it's just like, you know. Yeah. Um, do you know what the skew is between you and your partner's invites? Is it 50-50? Is it more your guest than his? He's got a few more. Oh. He's definitely got a lot more friends. Okay. <laughs> He's a lot more friendly than me. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so because he's got more family as well and then a little bit more friends. Yeah. More so work friends than anything. Um, but, yeah, that's it's more harder, like, for him because – before we were together, he went to a lot of their weddings. Ah. The, so that's the, where, yeah. Yeah, the courtesy, uh, yeah. you invite me, I invite you. Mm. Yeah, for but sure. But then again, like you were saying, he hasn't really spoken to them and some of them I haven't even met. Yeah. So I'm like, we've been together for five years and I haven't even met them. It means you haven't hang, hung out with them as yeah. much. Yeah. Um, so, Yeah. Yeah, it's another harder for him. Another hot take is it's your day. He's an accessory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very much so. Right? <laughs> so it's an interesting one. And again, it comes down to um, how you define an intimate wedding, yeah. right? If you lay down the rules before you start the guest list, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to go through it. Mm -hmm. If you say, and you have to both agree on the list. Yeah. Because if you both agree and one rule disqualifies a guest – based on the rule that you both agreed to, doesn't matter whose guest it is, yeah. right? Yeah. 
Yeah. And that should be easier to kind of get through that. Because yeah. once you say the word intimate wedding, people should understand. Yeah. Right? So when you start going through that process again, come up with your three to five rules that go, should we invite the people that one of us have never met before? Yeah. Is it going to be, you know, worth it? Because intimate means you've kind of at least seen both of – both yeah. like the, the, his side of friends. But, yeah, um, again, this is just my opinion mm -hmm. and uh, some people will go, don't listen to him, you know, his advice is shit. Um, mm -hmm. But from my observation, it's better to know as many people as you can. Yeah. Because if you're meeting them for the first time, you're like, oh, who's that? Yeah. You know? My wedding day, I knew 95% of the people – the other 5%, I had no idea who they were. I didn't mind they were there, mm -hmm. but it, they were for my wife. Yeah. And But because the split was about 25-75 her way, <laughs> she yeah. knew mo most of my people. Um, but, yeah, so the invite stuff, uh, we can continue. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other specific questions for the invites or guest um, list? Not really. It's more just like, yeah, like where you draw the line kind of thing. Mm. Um, but no, I like your suggestion about making a set of rules. Yeah. That would definitely help a lot. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And like you have your immediate family and yeah. you have the siblings and the, the plus ones of the, you know, in-laws mm -hmm. and, and then also their kind of plus ones as well. Yeah. And then you have the cousins, the brothers, and you're already at 30-ish people. Yeah. Right? Uh, give or take, depending on how big your family is. And then you have your close friends on each side and, and most of the time your close friends are in your bridal party already. Mm -hmm. But then you have your extended friend group that you see occasionally every kind of month or so. And then you have your work friends. If you started a new job, oh, well, yeah. whatever, <laughs> maybe your old work friends. Yeah. Um, but it really just comes down to how, how often you communicate, right? Yeah. Honestly, the biggest stressor is the fear of someone calling you out going, hey, how come you didn't invite me to your wedding? Yeah. Most likely they would not do that. Yeah. They don't care. Think it, but. <laughs> they may think <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, but yeah. Wait, say it. <laughs> so, no. you know, um, and that's, that's how it is. Yeah. You know, but um, if you don't set the rules, you it can carry away so quickly and then all of a sudden you're like, oh. And then the awkwardness comes after the ceremony, but we'll get there in a second. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, so you've invited the people, but you haven't picked a venue yet. No. What sort of venue are you thinking so far? That's the thing. There's so many options out there that it's so overwhelming. Um, we have really want to get married like on the beach, like have a ceremony on the beach. Um, we're looking, like, leaning towards down south. Yeah. Um, Great spot. Yeah. Now comes the question before you continue, what time of year? He really wants to get married on the 4th of Jan when we got engaged. Great, great day. Going to be potentially pretty hot. Yeah. And in the afternoon, the wind factor. Yeah. So first tip about planning where you're going to get married is – Understanding the average time of we of the weather mm -hmm. of that specific part of the day in that specific part of the year and how the sun behaved, how the wind behaved yeah. during that time. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to have so many more consequences like your hair is going to go everywhere, the sand might pick up yeah. and it might be just really hot. Mm -hmm. Are there flies generally in that area? Because you're going to be doing this, not good. And police might come past. <laughs> um, and, yeah, and the sun goes down a lot later in January. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which means that your golden hour, and we're skipping ahead a little bit, but we'll come back to it. Mm. Everything evolves around the ceremony time Yeah. in a wedding. Mm -hmm. Everything beforehand is timed to the makeup artist and hair. Yeah. You want the makeup artist and hair to be done – reasonably with a bit of a, an hour gap between it's finished and you're walking down the aisle. Yeah. Right? You need an hour there. Why? Because I'm a selfish photographer and I want that time with you to 
do a little bit of the dress, you know, yeah. put the, the dress on, getting a, a dad reveal, um, a few photos with the bridesmaids, obviously, with your yeah. mum, you yeah. know, things like that. Mm -hmm. If the haircut, uh, if the hair and makeup is done with 15 minutes to spare, we don't have that time. Yeah. So, that and that's, excitement. so that's why the, the anchor point is the time you're walking down the aisle. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say you've picked a venue and you've done all the due diligence on uh, time of year, consequence, the pros and cons. Yeah. If the pros outweigh the cons, book that venue, Okay. And make sure, and we're going to get into this a little bit more later, you have contracts with every single person that you hire and the venue that hires. Here are some nightmare stories, quick ones. Venues, some venues have booked weddings one, two years in advance with couples and then they start renovations. It's completely different. Yeah. You need to have them say in the contract that the venue is not going to be dramatically changed and your location is not going to change. Your reception spot isn't going to be different to what you agreed upon. Mm -hmm. And if it does, how are you compensated? You need to talk to your vendor about that. Yes. Right? So that's a big venue thing. That's one thing I would have never have imagined or thought about. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's a big one. Yeah. Um, then you've got to go with, okay, do they have an allocated coordinator on the day? Some do, some don't. You have to do it all yourself. If they don't and you don't have a coordinator, everyone's figuring it out. You have to put signage up and people need to know where they're going, where the cocktail hour is, things like that, right? And it's still so, so surreal talking about this as me. Four or five years ago, I would have not had a clue with enough practice, right? The reason why I say the anchor is the, the ceremony walking down the aisle is because afterwards what happens is family photo time. Yep. Yeah. And it can't be windy. It can't be super hot. There needs to be some shade because you don't want to be out in the sun, especially if your ceremony is at four o'clock, which is kind of when the ceremonies in, in summertime are because yeah. the sun sets at about seven. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's go back from, let's say your ceremony time is at four. When you invite your guests, do not tell them that the ceremony starts at four. Tell them that the ceremony starts at 3.30 because there's always going to be someone late, at least five people. I've never had a wedding where someone isn't like <laughs> shuffling like awkwardly behind the ceremony going, I'm here now yeah. halfway through the ceremony and yeah. they've completely missed you walking down the aisle or worse, as you're walking down the aisle, yeah. they arrive. Oh. My sister did that. Oh, to your wedding? Mm -hmm. <gasps> to my wedding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What excuse did she have for that? <laughs> uh, she was 19 at the time. Oh. And it was, I think it was her first wedding. But anyway, oh. so that's, that's a thing. Yeah. 3.30 start time, half an hour. Because if they're late, they're probably still going to be early. Yeah. Right? This is another thing why you have uh, the uh, location and understanding. If you want to get married on the beach mm -hmm. and you set it at 3.30 start time, the early birds will get there about 3, 3.15. Yeah. Maybe 3, you know. And they'll be there for an hour in the sun. Yeah. Right. So that's the that's the con of not saying the exact start time, but yeah. the the pro is people everybody will be there. Mm. Right. Um, but I guess that's also if it means something to you. Right. Yeah. If you don't not really phased about the two or three people that are late, then say it's four. And if you're late, then shit, I shouldn't have invited you. Yeah. <laughs> Give some respect, you know. Obviously don't mean that much to yeah. you. <laughs> but there's obviously like things, oh shit moments that people, it's out of their control and they're not late on purpose. Yeah. Right. But those accidents and mishaps uh, can happen earlier mm -hmm. so that then they're on time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've invited them and everything's good. Let's say everything is sorted and we'll go back to everything that you need to do. You wake up the morning of, you've delegated all the stuff, all your vendors know what they're doing. It's time to, you know, do your morning routine mm -hmm. 
and your hair and makeup artist generally, how many bridesmaids are you thinking? Mm, it's a tough one. Probably like three or four. Three or four? Yeah. Yeah, three or four is the, the average amount. Yeah. Um, any more than four gets to be a bit cramped. Yeah. Um, especially with the time of the makeup and the hair. So generally from experience is about 45 to 60 minutes of makeup and hair per, per bride. Mm-hmm. Uh, bridesmaid and you have the hair going simultaneously as well yeah generally it's like production line yeah in the morning. it's a production <laughs> line yeah uh some like i i can never for the life of me remember which one's first um the hair or the makeup some do one or the other yeah and just whatever um if they do the the hair they touch up the makeup later um but you need to allocate that time and then making sure that you have enough time mm-hmm. for for chilling out yeah and if you get things done early, great, right? The whole day is pretty much prep if you look at it. Then you have your ceremony, which is the fastest part, but it's also technically the most important part. The most stressful part for me isn't actually the ceremony. I know what I'm doing. I know the shots I need to take and I know where I need to be in every single moment of the ceremony. The stressful part's the, the intimate photos. After the bridal party fun photos, they scoot off. You, your uh, new husband and myself and second shooter perhaps and maybe a videographer, we're going to all these different spots and we're making it memorable for you, right? That generally is allocated up to two hours. I don't like to do it in two hours anymore because it's like too long of a time. Yeah. Um, but it really depends on what sort of photos that you're after. If you're after artsy ones, it may take a little bit more planning but generally those feel, feel a bit more posed. If you're after more natural ones, that's when we can just pretty much wing it. I mean, for me, I never wing it. I have a, like an ideas and I know all the spots. Yeah. And you generally have a Pinterest board that you create <laughs> that you Not can yet. send to me. <laughs> and then I'll be Definitely. like, okay, I, she wants this sort of vibe, okay? Yeah. Um, but the better brides have made a mood board from my own photos. Mm-hmm because they know I could take those photos. Which I have looked at. Exactly. <laughs> I've saved your Instagram. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So there's an expectation that, that is set, but you cannot assume that I can take or any photo- photographer can take a specific photo if it's out of their norm because a lot of photographers get into a rhythm and they may, may skip it. But that's where planning comes in. If you make a list, I'll have a list and I'll check it and make sure it's done, right? Okay, so bridal prep at the start. Mm -hmm. Girls are in the pajamas. You have your mum and whoever else is in the room hanging out. The boys are across the hall or down the road or wherever, and everything's all happening simultaneously. The boys take about 10, 15 minutes to get ready. That's if their shirts are pressed the night before and everything's ready and no one's forgotten socks. Every third wedding, the boys forget their socks for some reason. The boys are done, right? They can literally get ready at three o'clock if they wanted to and leave the whole morning and uh, early afternoon for golf if they wanted to. Um, For you girls, it's a little bit more hectic. You've got your mimosas flowing. You've got your straw for your mimosa so your lipstick doesn't get ruined. Um, And then you've also got, uh, you know, things and, and other bits happening. This is where we talk about wedding planners, right? A wedding planner is your bridezilla decoy. She or he is there on the day taking command with everything. You don't have to stress about vendors. I need that. Right? <laughs> now you have a timeline before the, before the day to know when everyone bumps in, when everyone's supposed to be there, what time your florist gets there, what time your limousine picks you up if you're having a limousine or you're just walking down. Every time I think about down south, I think Bunker Bay. Yes, we were actually looking it's at It's like Bunker one of my Bay. favourite <laughs> venues because everything's within walking distance, right? Yeah. Uh, but the village down the road, you still kind of want to drive there a little bit because otherwise it's a little bit too far to walk. Yeah. In your dress, in the summer, in the heels, with everybody else. The makeup sweating off. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So there's that. So what time the wet limousine or the, the cars rock up if you're having special cars? Uh, obviously, by the time the photographer or, and or videographer comes in, um, mostly and or, yeah, 
And then you've got, uh, I mean, your makeup artist gets there early, the first vendor that you kind of talk to on the day. Um, and then after that, it's the celebrant. Celebrant generally comes in um, within an hour, depending on who they are and what their schedule's like. An hour before ceremony starts, maybe 90 minutes. Again, I'm not speaking on behalf of all celebrants. Yep. <laughs> this is just my observation. Then you have uh, the afternoon party um, where, I mean, also you have your, uh, your setup, so your ceremony setup, the person that has the arbor, if you have an arbor, all the chairs, all the decorations on the chairs, Get a bit overwhelming now almost if you're thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, there's so much yeah. I haven't even thought of. <laughs> so if you go to my A to Z section on my website yeah. of all the different ones that you can think of, it's all listed there in the blog. Um, so off the top of my head, those are the big ones. Then you have something that you need to think about uh, for the guests. You need, a, you need a bucket of water bottles for the ceremony. So Definitely everybody will be thirsty. <laughs> you need some sunscreen potentially. Yeah. You'll need all this other stuff. And um, – but, yeah, all in all, the most important people there are yourself, your future husband and the celebrant. Worst case scenario, the PA system fails, the furniture people don't rock up and the wedding coordinator, wedding planner is sick that day. Uh, the morning of cannot make it. Worst, worst, worst nightmare case. Your guests rock up and you're doing stand-up style, uh, like top gear, and your celebrant's all intimate and just going, all right, guys, bunch in, we're going to do this. Yeah. We're going to do this regardless because these guys love each other. It's their sixth or seventh anniversary of the day they, they started dating. Let's get them married and let's make the most of this day. That is the worst case scenario. Yeah. And you still get married. Yeah. Success. <laughs> you still get that ring. Yeah? Yeah. So yeah. think about that as your worst case scenario. Then everything else after that becomes so much easier. Yeah. One little mishap shouldn't ruin your whole day mm -hmm. because you thought about the worst case scenario. Yeah. Okay. There have been mm -hmm. weddings I've done where the limousine broke down. We got an Uber van. Yeah. There have been cases where the florist was there five minutes before they were meant to drive off to the ceremony. We got it done. Mm -hmm. I went lapel mode and put all the little flowers on the boys, showed the bridesmaids how to walk down the aisle, made sure everything was dried under the flowers mm -hmm. because if you're wearing a satin sequence dress, Same it stains yeah. for a lot longer than other fabrics. Wow. So you need to yes. get the towel and... Dab it. <laughs> within half an hour of walking down the aisle. That's yeah. another tip. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to just throw you random tips throughout the time. Yeah. And we can talk about this more. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we still haven't walked down the aisle yet, but you have your makeup, your hair done. The girls are already ready. Yeah. And you also are stoked that your florist is there, your coordinator's on point. Now, if you don't have a wedding planner, it's always good to have a decoy bridezilla that isn't in the bridal party. Maybe a close cousin who isn't phased that you didn't put her in the bridal party, but she's stoked to have the job of the day where if something happens, she's onto it. Yeah. Because you do not want that problem. It's not, it's not your problem. Yeah. It's meant to be your day. Yeah. So think about that early. Okay? Mm -hmm. And don't let someone who's over-controlling and wants to make it their day in charge. I've had that before. My mum. <laughs> My beautiful mum. Yeah, your mum's there to to uh, cry at the ceremony and get drunk off the wine in reception. She'll and make, have one glass, you'll be gone. And make a funny speech, that's it. Okay, everything's ready, dress is on, jewellery's on, hair and makeup looks amazing. Have you chosen a dress yet, by the way? Absolutely not. <laughs> I haven't even thought of it. What are you thinking? I don't know. It's, it's so hard. I've got... A wedding book. Mm -hmm. My friends, um, they gifted me a wedding planner book and just flicking through it, I'm like, wow, haven't thought of that. Haven't thought of that. Haven't thought of that. And it's got a page there that's dedicated to 
wedding dresses and it's like what neckline you want, what fabric you want, what this, what that, like what what body shape, like yeah. or dress shape. I'm just like, whoa, yeah. <laughs> there's so many options there. Um, I do like the kind of like strapless but it's got the sleeves that drape down. Yeah. I feel like good. that's really classy. Yeah. Um, but other than that, absolutely no idea. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just like in Harry Potter where the wand chooses the wizard, yeah. the dress chooses the bride. Yeah. Right? So I've heard. So I've heard too. <laughs> um, always good to grab the girls mm -hmm. and maybe even the mum yeah. to go dress shopping. Um, if you're not phased about them seeing you in the dress before <laughs> the wedding day, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because it's part of the journey, it's part of the experience. Mm -hmm. Have a look at what it looks like on other people that are similar body type mm -hmm. and if you like what you see, put it on yourself and give it a go. There are many bridal shops out there that have you literally on a pedestal, yeah. standing there in front of a thousand mirrors. Most don't allow you to take photos because of comparison oh, but yep. it's good to like, you know. Yeah. You'll remember, you have the girls to remember and all of that. Yeah. Now, tips from me, late afternoon, you've been in that dress for about four or five hours. We've gone around and taken some photos in it. The, the bulk of the photos are done, reception time. If you get an over-the-top dress, and I'm talking like real fancy, long, trainers long, you have to bustle it up to walk around. Yeah. And if you try and spin, you're probably going to get tangled up. <laughs> Later on in reception, it's just going to be super heavy and you just can't wait to take the dress off at the end of the night. I mean, neither will your husband, but <laughs> nine out of ten um, couples actually don't really get intimate on their night because they're yeah. too tired and they're too drunk and they yeah. just fall asleep. <laughs> Let the morning sort itself out. <laughs> but um, – the, the brides I've seen that had an alternate dress, a cocktail yeah. dress, doesn't have to be a specific second wedding dress you pay thousands of dollars for. Mm -hmm. But just like something like cocktail-y that you can just easily dance around in. Yeah. I've seen play suits as well, like white play oh, suits. That's yeah. That's a good idea actually. I haven't seen any of them. Yeah. I've asked, I've asked every single bride yeah. what they feel like in their dress around dinner time and they're like, this – this dress was too big. I wish I had a – I wish I chose either a smaller dress yeah. or an alternate dress to change out of, mm -hmm. okay? So there's the pro tip there. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when – whatever whichever one you choose, yeah. I would love to hear that feedback after you get married. You hit me up one day on Instagram yes. and go, oh, thank you. That one. Yeah. That was a great piece of advice. But every one of the girls that have changed out of the dress into something more comfortable had the best time. Yeah. You can see it on their face. Yeah. Um, or drink more alcohol and really just go <laughs> numb with it. Okay. Dress is chosen. It's on. Jewelry's on. You've done all the bits and bobs, the, f the fun stuff. Photographer comes in and catches all the extra intimate stuff. It's time to go down the aisle. Your father walking you down? Yes. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> so you're walking down. Guests are there. It's all good. Um, now, there's alternate ways you can do this. You can do a, f a reveal first yeah. beforehand. Now, I've done a couple of these and, again, it's due to the person that wants to do it. They have been – they have loved it. They've, they've wanted to do it. Yeah. And it was beneficial for them. So it really is up to you whether you want that or not. Um, the benefits of doing a reveal first is you get it out of the way – some people take intimate photos first, but again, it's probably in the middle of the day, so lighting isn't the best. You can always take more photos later as well. Um, some have walked down together down the aisle, so it's a little bit less traditional. Yeah. My wedding, we, we took on a couple of traditional things. Everything else was just the way we wanted it. Mm -hmm. I wore a button-up shirt, untucked, black sh pants, like suit pants, and my Jordans. Sneakheads, nice. right? Yeah. My wife wore a red dress. Oh, wow. Because by chance, both of our mothers got married in red. Wow, it was meant to be. It was amazing. She looks so good. She looks wow, so good. Oh, yeah. And she had both the parents walk her down, down and then they kind of 
said, off you go and sat down. There was no handover of the bride or anything because she doesn't like that. There's no yeah. ownership or anything. Yeah. And then, yeah, we hung out and that was it. Yeah. My, my celebrant, Daniel Del Borello, really funny dude, mm -hmm. a comedian. He roasted us yeah. during the ceremony. I love that. <laughs> so I highly recommend yeah. hitting him up. Love um, it was a whole comedy routine about our lives yeah. and he just made puns about it and made fun of my Russian, made fun of her Dutch, <laughs> made fun of all these other things. Yeah. And we approved it beforehand just in case. Yeah. <laughs> then after that, we did the, the ceremony, rings, done, signing, done, and that was it. After that, we took photos and then we had a party. Yeah. Cocktail party. For you guys, it might be a bit different. Whatever, however you want to do it in the ceremony. Generally, a ceremony is about 20, maximum 30 minutes, mm -hmm. depending if you have someone doing a poem or singing a song or, or yeah. coming up yeah. and doing and kind of taking the mic for a bit. Generally, in the summertime, don't do that. Yeah, no, no. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and the celebrant, they, yeah, depending on who it is, sometimes they have their own little speech they put extra yeah. in, but depends on how personal you want to get. Mm -hmm. Um, then after that, you sign the sign the papers, and then you're introduced as husband and wife, and you go, go from there. Now we're on to after the ceremony, the hectic times. What I generally do is I get you to give me a photo list of um, all the family members that you want photos with then and there before it gets too dark, or some of them may need to go home, or for whatever reason, you have a list of different combinations. Yeah. Immediate parents, uh, immediate family, like parents only, grandparents only, parents and grandparents, parents, grandparents and siblings, siblings only, cousins, one side of the family, other side of the family, the entire family, maybe a group photo yeah. as well. If you want a group photo, that's always a fun one to do. Yeah. Just make sure there's an area that is a good place for the photographer to have a higher vantage point. Yeah. Because if there's not, it's really hard to do unless they have a drone. Yeah. Which makes it easier. The drone shots are yeah. beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> so generally, depending on the photographer, for me, because of uh, my school teaching background, I just tell people, with, I put my teacher voice on and go, mm. all right, parents, bang, bang, bang. And I've got the list of all their names. Yeah. So that's something you can do and go, batch one, my side mm. of the family. Mum, dad, their names. Grandma, grandpa, their names, siblings, blah, 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 all their names. Mm -hmm. So then I can just roll call them out and go, all right, guys, the next people, bang. Yeah. Make it super easy. Super quick, super yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Now, the one thing that I think is a bit overrated, and I don't want to preach to you what to do and not to do. This is just my observation. As soon as you walk down the aisle, a lot of the brides and, and grooms, they turn around and then there's a line that forms of all the guests congratulating yeah. them. You hug them. You have a brief 20 to 30 minute chat. Most of the time it's small talk. Yeah. And most of the time it's the same thing. Oh my God, look at your dress. Look, oh my God, you look beautiful. Oh my God, about time. <laughs> All this stuff. Yeah. Uh, nonna comes up and starts speaking in Italian, and gives you too many kisses and just forgets anything's there and just starts a whole conversation with you. Yeah. You don't want to push her on, but it's generally what happens. Mm -hmm. So this is where you communicate with your celebrant. Yeah. To, for them to go, right, immediately after the ceremony, they're going to go and take immediate family photos. The rest of you go have cocktail hour and start drinking. Yeah. Right? Start the party. So you've got to communicate with your celebrant. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so far, so good? So far, so good. Have I drawn a picture? Oh, you have like painted it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if you skip that, because it's hot. Right, yeah. and if there's no shade, especially Bunker Bay, if you're still on the beach, there's very yeah. little shade yes. in that spot. Um, they go up the 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 walk, the boardwalk into the cocktail hour. They're often racing, and then the photographer takes you down the road to Eagle Bay to take some on the rocks photos, which is a magnificent spot. Like if I could have every wedding there, I would have it there because it's mm -hmm. just undefeated. <laughs> um, yes, if you have a veil, by the way, yeah. Make sure one of the girls knows how to put it back in in case it falls out. Yeah. And make sure the hairdresser knows how to – they should know how to do it, but put yeah. it in and down. It's, it's in and down, not down. Otherwise, it will fall out. It's okay. in and down. It will stay. Okay. The amount of times I've fixed veils. It's painful. <laughs> it is painful, but it's uh, worth it because yeah. it stays stuck. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it looks amazing in photos and that's what matters, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> Now, with the photography stuff, don't skip out on the photographer because there are two things you take away from the wedding. Mm -hmm. Your husband 
and the photos and video if you, if you decide to do video. Everything else is eaten, drunk, sweated out, cried out, laughed out, and forgotten. Photos are your ticket back to your wedding. Yeah. So this is why the photographer is a lot of the time thought of first. Yeah. And this is why weddings are so like revolved around the photographer because they're the timekeeper. Mm-hmm. I want those photos. The hair and makeup artist is slow. I'll let them know about it. <laughs> If the limo driver's not on time, I'll let them know about it. I've blacklisted so many of them <laughs> because they've let me down. Yeah, they've yeah. let me down. They've let you down, but they've, yeah. they've let me down yeah. because I'm selfish. Yeah. I want my photos. Yeah. I want my yeah. photos to be on point <laughs> because they're going to be your photos. Yeah. But they're my photos first. So if I'm not doing something about it, because you've never done something about it before, it's your first wedding, I need to come in and go, no, mm-hmm. you are not, that's not right. You are too slow. <laughs> there have been times. Do better. <laughs> yeah. There have been times where I had to do that and stepped mm-hmm. in and the bride was like, thank fuck, because I, I didn't want to be rude. I'm like, it's your wedding day. Yeah. I'll be rude for you because I don't care. <laughs> I'm not going to work with this person again. So yeah. this is the one time maybe they'll learn from it. Yeah. But again, I don't want to sound like I'm gatekeeping or anything. If you plan all this and have – and if you set expectations for every vendor – Mm-hmm. because you've researched and understood it, hopefully this is a lot of help for you. Definitely. They will come to the table a lot more clearer or you know you'll be able to choose the vendors that are a lot more clearer mm-hmm. to come to the table because the industry isn't regulated. No. You have yeah. to know that. It's not regulated. Mm-hmm. You have to regulate it mm-hmm. and you have to regulate it through contracts, through meetings, through the right questions for each vendor. What happens if this? What would you do? It's like a job interview, right? Yeah. Literally it is because they're working for you on the day. You're not, you're not, you know, you're not their client. Mm -hmm. They're your helper, Mm -hmm. you know. That's that's the relationship that you've got to look at it like. They're more experienced but they have to, you have to make sure that they're in the right experience because there's so many cowboys out there that come in for a money grab and don't do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So celebrant. Ask them to talk to you about it. If you want a rehearsal, definitely a good idea. Yeah. Because then you know how to do it, where to go, what the pace is and all of that. The celebrant should take care of that. Um, everything that can go wrong before the ceremony is literally up to the vendors if they're late or not. You have to talk to them about it. Yeah. You have to set um, an expectation where if you're late, will I get compensated? Yeah. If they say no, would you choose them as a vendor? Mm. No, they shouldn't be late. Yeah. What else are they doing that day? Yeah. Right? Okay, after ceremony, photos of the family is taken. Great. You're stoked. You're you're now a wife. How good is this? (laughs) Uh, Then it's time for the intimate photos, okay? Now, the intimate photos, the first half hour generally is with the bridal party. You do those things. Then the bridal party kind of sticks stays on their own probably near the ex esky full of booze that you've uh, allocated for them (laughs) and a food platter as well because you will be hungry yeah and thirsty then about up to 60 minutes ish we're looking now at about 4 30 4 45 5 o'clock ish you're driving around to the different spots six o'clock reception that's when you get invited back in um you get introduced with your bridal party they go in first, you go in last, and then how are you? Everybody's happy. Now, with the reception time, if it's in January, sunset's at seven. So you have an hour to get acquainted with your guests. Yep. But if it was me as a photographer, I would let you know, hey, just before seven, I'm coming up to you, tapping on the shoulder, saying, we're getting some golden hour shots. Yes. Right? Because that's when the light's most beautiful. Again, up to your discretion, up to how the photographer is talking about it. Now, let's say all the photos are done, everything's done, it's all just reception. I'm very careful of what I say here because I've got specific um, things that I think are getting slightly out of tradition. Yeah. But this is an observation from what I've asked the brides. If you come in, you're going to see a, you're going to see a beautiful setup. Yeah. You're going to see the cake in one corner that's been there for the whole day or maybe half the day or whatever. 
the more interruptions, the more stop and starts you have throughout the night, the less party time you have at the end. You've got to make sure you have a time where you know what time you're all getting kicked out. Generally, it's 12 o'clock. Yeah. If it's one of those venues that has noise restrictions, it's 11 and that sucks. Yeah. Ours was like 11 and that sucked. Yeah. So 12 is a good time. One's better depending on how young the party is. Mm-hmm. Now, if you come in and get introduced to your dance and sit at the bridal table, you have your appetizers coming in, the first set of food generally. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then you have speeches. Then you have more food, then you have more speeches, then you have the cake and then you have your first dance. If you want to have a, a father-daughter dance as well, you can do that first. Mm-hmm. But I found that if you do everything quicker towards the start of the reception, you have more room to just hang out with your best friends, your family and just dance and drink more. Yeah. But if you come in and sit down and then dance a little bit, stop, dance a little bit, stop, yeah. could get uh, a bit annoying. Yeah. And this is what I found a lot of brides don't like. Yeah. The best method that I found um, that I have given to someone and they did it and they were super thankful for this method is come in, introduce, hello, how are you going? Cut the cake straight away. Mm. Cake's done. Because the cake literally takes one minute, two minutes. Yep. The reason why is everyone's anticipating you to come in yeah. and they're all standing up and they're all attentive. Later on in the night, they're not as attentive. Yeah. Attentive at the start, they will watch you to cut the cake. Yeah. Cut it the cake. special. Yeah. yeah. Cut the cake, cake's done. They can wheel the cake away and cut it up for dessert later on, ready to go. Mm-hmm. Right? Put some ice cream on there, whatever. <laughs> Once you cut the cake, then you can sit down and do your thing. Appetizers come out, you eat. During the exercises, you can have your speeches. Yeah. Depending on how many speeches you have and the al- allowed time you have for the speeches per person, because generally the dads sometimes go overtime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you have about four to six people, it's not bad to stagger, stagger them. Yeah. Have the parents talk first on each side and then you have the best man and um, maid of honour talk second. Right? Or best man generally speaks last. Yeah. And then it's you two. Oh, gosh. That now gives you, me anxiety. <laughs> now, you both don't have to talk. Yeah. If he can talk and you're standing next to him, that's mm. fine. And if you have the muster up the courage to say something else during that time, that generally is how it happens. Mm-hmm. Okay? Then after that, now let's say, let's say you do it like this. Appetizer's speech. Yeah. Sorry. Appetizer's speech. Dinner speech and it really depends if you want speeches during dinner mm. because all you're going to hear as well is knives and forks ding, 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 tick 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 ding. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but generally towards the end of dinner when people are starting to you know you don't want to do speeches when they're carrying out the food because they get in the way and it's a bit annoying yeah that's happened before yeah so that's up to you to decide how you yeah. want it then after that, that more so like conversations with the vendor, yeah. like with, with the venue about yeah. their time frame as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah. It is also due to the ven- um, the yeah. venue too. So the other thing that I've remembered to give tips about is, and this is going to sound very like straightforward. So forgive me, but do you bloat easily? Yes. Now, yes. Do you want to have your first dance after you've had all that food? Yeah, probably not. First dance at the start. Yeah. yeah. Introduce straight into the first dance. Yeah. Cut the cake. I wear a flowy dress. Yes, unless you wear a flowy <laughs> dress and hide it. Yeah. Yeah. But here's where all these elements come into play. Yeah. Right? Cool. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Only problem is about that is traditionally first dance is at the end and then the whole dance floor erupts and then yeah. it's time to party. Yeah. Right? But if that's something that you may be concerned about, Mm -hmm. first dance at the start, get all the formalities out the way, Mm -hmm. and then at the end we start the party. Yeah. Yeah. The reception is made or broken by the DJ. Oh. We're going to talk about the DJ now. The DJ is someone that understands your audience. Yeah. They ask what you like. Mm -hmm. But you also need to not restrict your playlist to what you like only. Yeah. 
because the DJ needs to be allowed to read the crowd. Mm -hmm. If it's just your songs, I know it's your wedding, but reception is a little bit more for your guests. Yeah. The whole day was yours. The night time is for your guests. Mm -hmm. It's still your day, but the night time, you want to have the guests entertaining. Going back to my wedding, we had a party. Mm -hmm. It was like a nightclub. Yeah. <laughs> Out in the open. We got married at Rothwood Estate. Great, oh, great venue. yeah. And to this day, my friends, I'm, I'm not even lying, they were like, that was the best wedding. Yeah. It was just such a party. It was a vibe. It was like you invited me to a, a giant dance party <laughs> piss up with food. Yeah. And you made a wife. I was like, yep. <laughs> but the DJ knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah. Read the crowd, knew what we wanted mm -hmm. and just vibed. Everyone had a good time. You want to you wanna impress the majority of the crowd. If you have some oldies w annoyed that you're not playing some old school stuff, who cares? Yeah. They can, they can have their time a little bit later or they can do it earlier just before the real party starts mm -hmm. and then we're away. So you need to know that the, the – the, the, please don't get Spotify playlists. Don't, don't even think oh, about yeah, that. Yeah, no. So, no. yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much the whole day. Yeah. There's a few different elements in there that are up to you to decide on how you want to do them. Yeah. Um, but how has that kind of painted a picture? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's opened up a can of worms really. Like it's all those little things that I never would have even thought I needed to consider. Um, yeah, it's got me thinking. It's got me thinking. Yeah. Lots of good ideas that, yeah. Questions. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> it's more so just like um, the wedding coordinator, like getting a wedding coordinator seems like it's pretty much black or white. Like mm. you should get one <laughs> to make it way less stressful. Did you yeah. guys have one for your wedding? Yeah, I had uh, – her name was Lisa. Yeah. Um, from Gem Wedding Planners. Yeah. Um, she I, – I did a few things for her early on in my career with wedding photography. Yeah. And um, she came in and helped coordinate the wedding on, on the day. Yeah. She didn't help plan my wedding mm -hmm. but she coordinated on the day. Yeah. And Coordinator, yeah. she actually originally volunteered to be the dog carer because oh. I wanted my dogs at the wedding. Oh, beautiful. And then last minute we opted out but yeah. she was already assigned to the day. Yep. Yeah. And she just goes, I'll just volunteer to coordinate. I'll help yeah. you out. Oh, and it good. stood the test of time because um, it was a good investment on her end. Yeah. Because every time someone asks about a coordinator, I'm like, I'll just, I'll just recommend mine. Yeah. And I had absolutely like quality vendors yeah. at my, like they just did their thing. I had uh, a bar, a DIY bar, and I got uh, some kegs yeah. um, and they were tapped in and then also had a wine bar. Yeah. But I needed um, bar staff that had RSAs, mm -hmm. excuse me, to distribute the, the wine. Yeah. And I thought it would be a good idea to bring some old students that I had when I was a high school teacher who are now 18 or 19 at the time. Yeah. I made them get their RSAs before the day and they rocked up, fully kitted out. Oh, I love that. But they had no idea what they were doing. Oh. Fortunately before that, Lisa – had organised two more bar staff because she told me that wasn't – two two kids is not enough. You're going to struggle. Yeah. And I had assumed that it was going to be okay. But then I realised who's going to take care of them? I'm busy getting married and having a good time. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So she came in clutch and she got two bartenders who hadn't bartended in, in like 10 years come out of retirement from the other job <laughs> and they had the best time. Yeah. And they killed it. They they yeah. were they loved it. Yeah. And they helped the kids out and, yeah. and, and everything was amazing because of Lisa. Yeah. Right? Wow. And yeah. all the rest of the things yeah. that, that happened that day. Yeah. And um, yeah, coordinators definitely. Yeah. Coordinators definitely something on the day yeah. just takes the edge off. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things that you're like, oh, I don't know if I have the budget for it. But afterwards you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. Thank God. Good idea. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. it's the same with like like right now. Yeah. The wedding planners do consult as well and mm -hmm. they give you a breakdown as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Um, for me, that's where I end. I don't yeah. want to be a wedding planner. Yeah. I like yep. to just talk about <laughs> the day. Talk about the process mm, and everything. The process. No, you've really, yeah, opened up a whole can of worms about things that I need to consider and things I should think about and all the rest of it. I mean, like I haven't even 
haven't even dove into the deep end looking and researching into it yet. Um, so I feel like when I start doing that, I'm going to have a whole bunch more questions for you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I'm going to the wedding expo or the wedding open day this weekend and hopefully I get a few more ideas. Um, but, yeah, that should be really exciting. Yeah. Really exciting. Approaching vendors slash suppliers yeah. or at wedding expos, yeah. my pro tip would be if they come up to you and they feel pushy, they're red flag. Yeah. Right? They listen to you. Do you align with their vibe? Is there past experiences that you've seen align? And, you know, things like that. Mm. Is there any particular questions apart from what you suggested before, like contracts and things like that, what I should be asking vendors when I first approach yep. them? What makes you different to all the other vendors? Mm. What's your unique point of view? See what they say. Yeah. My unique point of view is I'm six foot ten. Yeah. <laughs> you get no double chins from my, my height, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, plus I'm very extroverted. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Yeah. I'll come in and pretend I'm a photo booth with your girls I've never seen before and I'll just be like, photo booth time, you're going to change your pose every three seconds. Yeah. Okay, change pose, change pose, <laughs> right? Yeah. If they can describe to you how they would do it on the day yeah, and they can really paint the picture for you, mm -hmm. they're on the green list, they're on the yes list. Yeah. Um, another question would be um, – how can you make my day memorable and see what they say? If it sounds robotic, then you have to kind of figure out whether or not they're just really experienced or they're just saying it to get you as a client. Yeah, whether it's genuine, I guess. Yeah. 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 Two years ago, I realised that I wanted less clients, less couples per year mm -hmm. than more. And that's because there were so many people to remember. Mm -hmm. My memory's not the best. Mm -hmm. Right? So do you want a supplier that's doing a shit ton of in weddings a year or do you want someone that's a, a bit more like I just want to focus on this one for this one weekend or every two weeks, you know? Mm -hmm. um, obviously some are career vendors or some are part-time vendors. So mm -hmm. that's something else that you can ask. Yeah. How long have you been in the industry for and um, how – how do you help solve the problems that are, that could come to you on my wedding day to assure that everything is going to be fine? Yeah. Something else that you can ask. Yeah. 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 So if I got remarried yeah. again, I would just literally ask those questions. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're very good questions to ask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Yeah. Um, anything um, else specifically? Um, I'm trying to think now what else there is. Okay, whilst you think, yeah. I'll give you the hierarchy of what you should book in oh, yes. specific orders. Yeah. First thing is your venue. Yeah. Once you have your venue and your lock date, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's where you're going. Then of that venue, they have their preferred suppliers. Yeah. Start there. Okay. Ask the venue who are their supp uh, preferred suppliers mm -hmm. and then they'll give you that list to start with. Interrogate all of them. Call them up, email them. Do they reply quickly? If they don't reply quickly, do you want that sort of correspondence leading up to your wedding day? Will that stress you out if they don't respond 48 hours outside your wedding day because you want one specific problem, you have one specific query that you need answered? Because realistically, if they're there for your wedding day, they can't respond 48 hours before then, Yeah. red flag. Right, you get early signs of that at the start when you're booking. So you got your venue. Then traditionally, it's the photographer, yeah, because they're they're the ones that you take your tickets, your memories of from are with you. Then you have your celebrant. Your third one is your celebrant, because they're the ones that you need to get married mm -hmm. and they need to marry you. Then you have your DJ, your music whether it's during the ceremony as well, and then obviously reception. If you want them to MC as well, that's a good question to ask the DJ. Can you MC? Generally, it's an extra cost. Yeah. Or you can allocate an MC for you in your, in your party or whoever. Yeah. Right? You can get a professional MC as well. 
Mm-hmm. Sometimes a celebrant can also back up as an MC. Yeah. Um, there are some amazing, incredible uh, celebrants that are also amazing MCs. Daniel Daniel Debruello is one of them. Yeah. The the ones the photo the the times I've done weddings with him as a photographer, yeah. receptions was just like that funny. Yeah. It was just so funny. Yeah. Um. So those are the four so far: venue, photographer, celebrant, DJ. Then you have the florist. Okay. Actually, before you have the florist, you have the makeup artist. The makeup yes. artist and the hair is important. Oh yeah, they're yep. up there. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's yeah. that's a big one. Florist, and then you have uh, your vehicles. Mm-hmm. So how you're going to get to the venue and how you're going to get around during intimates. Um, cake, mm-hmm. obviously your uh, your dress, and then your bridal dresses, and then the suits. So now we're getting a little bit more expansion wise. Yeah. Uh, furniture. Uh, does the venue uh, bring out the furniture for you? Yeah. Do they have their own arbor? If not, who who do you have as an arbor? Some smaller vendors include photo booths. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, magicians. Bring a magician in. I've had magicians. That's cool. <laughs> um, and then live singers mm-hmm. uh, during ceremony or during the reception. Um, and those are, the, those are the major ones I can think of off the top of my head. Um, but Is then, there a certain time frame you would book certain things? Yeah. So a good – the better ones generally book out within 12 – like outside of 12 months. Yeah. Within 12 months you're going to have a slimmer picking. Yeah. It's going to be cheaper but you're risking only trying to find the diamond in the rough. Yeah. Right? And I feel like – you know, the, the industry could be saturated with vendors, mm-hmm. but that's where you have to do your due diligence and really ask them questions because if you don't ask them questions, then you could risk getting someone that's just a good salesman. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And I've had weddings where I've done my absolute best mm-hmm. and I've had a response straight after going, you were amazing today, I can't wait for the photos. Mm-hmm. And when I send them the photos, they're, like, they're amazing. And then months later they're like, Oh, I wish they were like this, you know? Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. No, nobody's perfect. Yeah. You know, it's like you go you, you go to the same restaurant because yeah. you love the food and then they just had an off day, the food's not great. I mean, obviously it's not the best for your wedding day, mm. but this is where you do your due diligence and ask them, how can you reassure me that they are going to be, yeah. you know, it's going to be the same for you. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of vendors. There's a lot of things that you think about, but don't overthink it. Don't overdo it either. Yeah. Simple sometimes is better. Yeah. The more people you have on board, the more things can go wrong. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, but if you have a brilliant coordinator that has a good contingency plan, backups, and obviously years of experience, mm-hmm. then um, that stress is relieved. The more vendors you have, the more likely you should get a coordinator. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the more stressed you think you'll be, the more likely you should get a coordinator. That's me. The more (laughs) hectic your guests you think will be, the more likely you should get a coordinator. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Leaning towards that highly. (laughs) That's it. That's it. Yeah. 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 Um, Have you thought of any new questions? Um, no, it was more so, yeah, like timeframes for th- certain things and, um, yeah, like booking certain things and mm. questions and. Yeah, within yeah. 20, 12 to 24 months yeah. is a good time to book your vendors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because then you have the ones that are still available, like genuine good ones. Yeah. Yeah. You've covered so much basis. Like yep. you literally covered every single question that I would have asked already. You're so thorough. Thank you. <laughs> so um, thorough. Definitely yeah. join the wedding Facebook groups. There's one okay. called Everything Weddings Perth. Okay. It's actually pretty well monitored or yeah. moderated. I, it doesn't even feel like it's moderated. Everyone there is just, yeah. Is it like vendors and stuff post on there or is it Yeah, vendors so like... and stuff. Just be careful when you post on there asking a question. Yeah. Because you're going to get a lot of sales pitches. True. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's fine as well, but yeah. don't allow yourself to be overwhelmed with all yeah. the people because okay. they, they're just trying to make a living. Yeah. Right? Um, people would have different opinions. Yeah. Too, so. A story about when I was in the wedding groups, mm-hmm. I still am, like still, I still observe, 
But when I joined, um, I saw majority of the photographers, they just put a website and a little bit of like a sentence about them. That was it. Yeah. Like 99% of them. Mm -hmm. And then I came in and I would not put my wedding pay website down. I would put a photo down because you can reply with a comment yeah. photo. I'd be like, hey, uh, congratulations. Um, I took this photo just recently at a recent wedding. Yeah. If this is something that you like and you can see yourself in the photo, hit me up on my Instagram for more and DM me on there. Mm. That was it. Yeah. I had so many DMs. Yeah. So many. And the common, que common question was, thank you for not pitching to me and yeah. DMing me privately. Yeah. And yeah. And what I and then another one was uh, brides would go, can some can uh, you guys recommend me a, a vendor, ex vendor? Mm -hmm. And when they say photography, obviously it's my wheelhouse, but they didn't ask for people to pitch them them their business. Mm -hmm. So I had a list of three photographers, and I would just suggest to them. Yeah. And I'd be like, hey, these are the photographers that I've worked with that I know do a good job as a photographer myself. Blah blah blah. Yeah. And then go, if you want more recommendations, hit up my Instagram yeah. and, I'll, and I'll tell you some more on my Instagram. Yeah. They would go to my Instagram, DM me and go, thank you for not pitching and yeah. being salesy. Yeah. Your recommendations were amazing mm -hmm. but I just had a look at your Instagram and I was like, oh, my God. Mm. And then they also said the fact that you weren't salesy got me to like you even more. Yeah. You know, but that's, that's where that approachable comes in. Right. But that's more <laughs> advice for other vendors. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know. Know what you want. Don't yeah. allow someone else to sell you something different, mm -hmm. right? Okay, yeah. Um, but, yeah, enjoy your um, expo this weekend. Thank you. Um, Thank it's you. on the Saturday or the Sunday? Sun Sunday, I believe. Yeah, yeah Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, if Sundays weren't for my wife, I yeah. would I would uh, <laughs> do a road road doco with you. Um, <laughs> we'll see how we go. Maybe I can. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, definitely – Get out there, yeah. ask the questions, enjoy yeah. it. Thank you. Are you gonna take are you gonna take him or your mum or No, I'm gonna take my girlfriend. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's gonna awesome. take one of one of the girlfriends. Yeah. yeah. I won't I won't drag him through that pain. <laughs> I've taken him to a few like little like higher places um for our engagement yeah. and he was just like standing there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no idea. I was That's like, What it. colour scheme do you want? And he's just like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't care. It's fine. He was like, yeah. You choose it. It's your day. It's like, Whatever colour <laughs> you want, you go for the colour that you want. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> yeah. I was asked a colour scheme the other day, question the other day. Yeah. Um, the other thing as well is if you are both deciding on the financial side of your budget yep. and you need his green light for it. Mm -hmm. Make sure that he is part of the conversation. Yeah. When you're uh, onboarding a specific vendor, you know, like if if they seem like they're going to be a little bit higher cost. Yeah. And you don't want a risk of compromising for a not so good vendor. Mm. Um, you know, there's a difference between good and great, and that yeah. is the experience and and or the cost. Yeah. So if you are not bringing your partner into the conversation, mm -hmm. when you relay the information to your partner outside of the initial consultation, he is just going to see the what figures. their product is, what the cost is, and that's it. Yeah. So make sure they're part of the conversation so mm -hmm. they understand the value and the emotional connection between you and the vendor that you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, that was a lesson that I learned when I was um, talking to brides for the yeah. first time. Because they would be generally calling me straight after school or they'd be uh, like school drop off or they would be uh, in the morning or they're on their lunch break because yeah. they're you know, sifting through Instagram excited yeah. and they'd call me for a quick half hour on their lunch break and their, hus or their husband to be is not around, mm -hmm. they relay that information to their husband later on yeah. and I wouldn't hear from him again and the reason was the cost. Yeah. But the, the, the husband to be was on the phone call or in the Zoom or in yeah. the person meeting. Yeah. The girls got what they wanted. Yeah, yeah. So. That's the other thing. Um, Cost-wise. Yes. That's what he is really concerned about. Mm-hmm. He has said he won't enjoy the big day if he knows it's going to be expensive. Yeah. Which I'm like, no, when you get to the day, you're definitely going to enjoy it. You're not going to be thinking about the money spent. <laughs> um, but a reasonable price for particular vendors and things like that 
is there any sort of budget or guideline or yeah. anything oh, that we should be looking for? Yeah, so the industry kind of standards are based off of the averages of the last few years. You're generally looking lower budget of 20000 mm-hmm. up to a higher budget of 40000 yeah. And then the extra budget of 50000 50, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and that's still considered uh, like that middle tier sort of range. If you want to go all out and do all the little things, <laughs> and I'm talking, yeah. let's start the list, I'm talking little gifts for your guests, oh, yeah. um, sparklers and, and, and stages and smoke machines and, and extra lights and and all these extra people coming in and, and ex- a, a over-the-top florists mm-hmm. um, and, and I'm saying over-the-top because they really pack a punch and they really decorate the room. Not that really good for me for photos, yeah. right? But bouquets are not cheap. No. Wedding cakes are not cheap. And there's shortcuts I can give you as well. Like yeah. for me, um, if I had a wedding, I actually had a cheesecake for my wedding cake. <sighs> But not like a like a, a dessert cake. Yeah, it was a cheese wheel. Yeah, cheese wheel. Oh, I yeah. love that. Yeah, and my favorite all time. I'm going to get in so much trouble for this, but my favorite all time <laughs> wedding cake was actually a honey cake. Oh. It was a four tier honey honey cake. Oh my gosh, yum! Yeah, see, I'm very lucky in the cake department because my beautiful auntie is a cake maker. Excellent. There you go, saving money yeah. already. I mean, not there's your not wedding professionally. gift. Professionally, yeah, there's not your wedding professionally. Gift. Yeah. She um she did it while she was pregnant. Yeah, and um she had has three kids. Um, so she had lots of time <laughs> to prepare and yeah. practice. And yeah, she's a self taught off like YouTube, watching loads of videos, and she creates the most amazing cakes. She Perfect. literally created like a pepper pig one. She literally made the pepper pig and then even like a fire truck. Um, my dad has a boat and so for his 50th birthday, she made the I made, cake made the boat. of his oh, boat. Oh, that's awesome. It's so sick. It's yeah. so good. And even like the sand of the the boat on the sand, the sand was like all made out of like sugar and this and that. Love like it. Love the it. whole thing's edible. Yeah. She's great. She's great. <laughs> um, to break down my wedding costs at the time, um, Rothwood was just starting out. Mm-hmm. So I got them cheap. It was 6000 just for the venue. Yeah. But we had three nights accommodation. Yeah, wow. That included housing eight people. Yeah, wow. That's you know, good. that's that yeah. was already – and we had a pool. Yeah. So we are there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know. Yeah. Um, and Kevin, the, the caretaker, the owner, he, he had a dance floor. He upsold us with that. And, you know, you, you could drive up the food trucks right up to the venue. Mm-hmm. We, had a, we had a fire truck, uh, decommissioned fire truck that turned into a, a, a pizza oven. Oh my gosh, I've inquired with him yes. about my engagement. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. That's yes. Cool. So I think that was like two, three grand. Yeah. You know, to feed like 80 people. Yeah. That's that's fair enough. Yeah. We bought a shit ton of wine from Aldi. Yes. And it's like six to ten dollars a bottle and it was decent wine. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, you have the soft drinks and things like that. We did a lot of DIY. Mm. Coordinator helped us. We had the ice. We had the combi keg. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend them because they're terrible communicators. At the time, they may be different now, but at the time they were terrible. Yeah. So maybe different. Mm -hmm. And we had to go get our own kegs from the beer university, which was also a thing. Mm -hmm. I think they do that for you now. I don't know, but that was an extra time thing. Yeah. But it was for our wedding. So I got the beer test and stuff, which was cool. (laughs) Ciders as well. And then afterwards, any kegs that we had left over, we had to bring them back. But we we bottled up all our beers ourselves, yes. and that was a real fun experience. I felt like a brewer. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what's that cost now? We're sitting at about ten grand already, just for mm-hmm. venue, food, and drinks, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And some venues do all of that in one package. Generally, it's between twelve to fifteen grand. Yeah. Ish. Then you have the photographer. The photographer's mm-hmm. like between two, uh, 2000 the lower end, yeah. uh, up to six, eight, even 10000 for the higher end. Yeah. But depending on their packages, depending on how much they do and yeah, who like they hourly are. Hourly and stuff like that. Uh, normally they don't package? do hourly. They oh, do okay. like half daily or full, full yeah. day. Yeah. Um, okay. Or unlimited. Yeah. Right. 
my costs went up because of my demand. Yeah. You know, uh, from a business point of view, I can't service. I don't want to do 50 weddings a year. Yeah. I want to do 20 with the right couple and, you know, I'm getting compensated for my for my skill set, but also for my, my person, my persona. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously the product has got to be good too. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so let's say it's five grand for a photographer. We're sitting at between 12, 15, even up to 17,000, maybe mm-hmm. looking at the 20,000, which is a lower end. Yeah. Still got to get the celebrant mm-hmm. and they're between 750 to, to, to 1500, depending on who it is. Mm-hmm. Then you got the DJ again, seven fifty to fifteen hundred, depending on who it is. So that's another three grand. So we're sitting at around five twenty five. If your cake is a wedding gift from your aunt, great. Um, but then you've got a couple of other things that you have to think about, like yeah. uh, the I mean the florist, the hair and makeup. Yes. I don't know exactly what the hair and makeup costs. Oh, usually so, it's expensive. Yeah. Usually it's a couple hundred each. Yeah. So usually we're looking – package deals yeah. and stuff, but – Yeah. Mm. So we're looking we're, – we're actually, we actually are looking close to between the thirty to $35,000 mark yeah. um, just for those. But, again, if you want to start adding on the little things like yeah. photo booth and things like that, you're getting close to the forty grand mark. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You can solve a lot of problems if the venue caters and provides the drinks and the bar the bar is included for a specific amount of time. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the biggest chunk that you'll spend. Everything else is how quality you want it. Yeah. Right? You can get a celebrant. You can get one of your friends to be a celebrant if you really wanted to. Mm-hmm. They just have to apply to – they just have to register and do the thing and they can be a celebrant. I've, I've seen that so many times. Yeah. They weren't the best celebrant. For their first time, but they still did it, and yeah. the and the couple was stoked because they saved lots of money. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. then also their friend married them. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. The florist, I mean, my florist was um, my future, my father in law's girlfriend. Yeah, she's she's one of those uh, like um, hippie Fremantle girls that yeah. makes cool stuff out of anything. That's awesome. And yeah. she made a bunch of flowers out of bush plants and stuff that oh, she gathered. Natives. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that makes it even more special, you know. Exactly. Like, yeah. So there's shortcuts you can do there. Yep. Um, but again, it's it's how exuberant that you want it. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like all out, like people spend more money on flowers sometimes they do oh. on the photographer. Yeah. My brother and his fiance are getting married at the moment. Right. And them talking about the costs, I'm like, oh. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then obviously if it's a more intimate wedding, you don't have mm-hmm. to have all the extras. You can yeah. just do the quick ceremony and you can have a, you know, small function room mm-hmm. and just deck that out and just do your thing. If, if the most important thing is having your friends and family there and the food is, is good and the drinks are good, Everything else, uh, just the DJ and the the photographer and obviously the celebrant has married you mm-hmm. and you're good. Good to go. You know, yeah. everything else, you know, like you can get cupcakes instead of a cake. Yeah. You get a whole tiered looking statue of mm-hmm. cupcakes that looks like a cake. Yeah. You know? Yeah, or a cheesecake. Or a cheesecake <laughs> made of cheese, exactly. <laughs> so, <love> yeah, <laughs> the cost is quite frightening. Yeah. And if I did it again. If I got married again, God forbid, because, um, you know, I'm still married and don't want a divorce or anything ever, <laughs> um, we would hire out a warehouse. Mm-hmm. We would bring in – we would bring in my – I'd still have the same DJ, not going to lie, he was yeah. elite. <laughs> um, we would hire out the chairs and stuff mm-hmm. and delegate someone to set it all up and we would get – We'd have the ceremony and the reception in the same spot. Yeah. We'd have it one side of the warehouse, the ceremony, all done up, cool looking. And then the other side is the party, the dance floor, the, mm-hmm. the seating and the, 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 the couches and stuff, hire some furniture or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, do that. Yeah. And, then, um, and then have food trucks rock up yeah. out the front, mm-hmm. like f- five or six of them though mm-hmm. and just have them go ham, give them all the budget and just yeah. go, here you go, yeah. keep, them out, keep our friends happy. Yeah. Probably cost us max 15 grand. Yeah. And the majority of the time 
People weren't waiting. Mm -hmm. We would rock up. We would be, we would just have an absolute warehouse of a party. Yeah. And I think that's actually where potentially the industry is going. Yeah. Is the younger generation, they can't afford to buy houses, yet alone a $40,000 wedding. Yeah. You know, traditionally yeah. like the parents help pay yeah. and you're going to get wedding gifts that is mostly always money mm -hmm. that help subsidize a bit of it. Mm -hmm. But I think that the kids are really just going to be, the younger generations are just wanting to have parties. Yeah. Just yeah. want to have a party. Definitely. Yeah. 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 But again, yeah. your wedding day, if you have yeah. this dream of this, of how you're walking down the <laughs> aisle and, and I know the girls, a lot of girls, they've been dreaming of this day for a while yeah. Yeah. and I'm not here <laughs> to tell them how you should do it now and what the industry's going for. It's just my prediction. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. Any other, yeah. any other questions before you finish up? Um, with your down south weddings. Yes. Main thing I'm concerned about Yep. I'm just is, checking the battery. Oh, yeah. Yep. Keep going. Um, the main thing I'm concerned about with, yeah, having a down south wedding mm -hmm. is where you have the ceremony and where you have the reception, that travel in between. Mm -hmm. Being down south, you know, there's not as much way to get around yep. by public transfer or the uh, transport and all the rest of it. Yep. And then it's like you don't want your guests having to drive yep. either. Okay, so... My next wedding is down south um, near Yelling Up. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember the venue off the top of my head, but they have got accommodation on site. Yeah. Beautiful location. Mm -hmm. uh, Bunker Bay, accommodation there. Yeah. Right? So you have to think about accommodation for your guests, mm -hmm. which could be a cost. Yeah. Right? Or you can negotiate a, a discount for the guests that have to pay. Yeah. Because, you know, like if I get invited to a wedding in Italy that I did last year – I still had to pay for the tickets, yeah. but accommodation was covered. Yeah. And the food and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it really depends on the venue. Um, majority of the time, the the venues that I uh, – the down south venues, their ceremony and the reception was literally right next to each other. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, just trying to think of some now. Yeah, Bunker Bay, Beach – up the road, up the boardwalk and you're there. A mm. um, couple of Margaret River spots, same thing. It's all in the same spot. Yeah. The only people that have to drive is us when we go out to the intimate spots. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, generally you can also allocate a bus that goes into town if it is out of town. Mm -hmm. Like there was a – there was another wedding that I did and it really depends on if you're a farm girl or not. But um, there was one I did at uh, St – Saint something. It was like literally recently and mm -hmm. um, sorry I forget. No, it's all right. But yeah, everyone rocked up, did the ceremony and then they all drove to the, the family's home which was 15 minutes away. Oh, that's beautiful. And then – but they were all locals as well. Yeah. So if all your guests aren't locals, mm -hmm. then you've got to make sure you've got somewhere within 10, 15 minutes all yeah. the accommodations on site or you have a bus yeah. or something that is hired – to come and pick them up and, and take them back to their accommodation. Yeah. 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 Okay. All but right. – uh, and this is where your guest invite list can thin out. Yes. Because you send them a list and they RSVP and if they don't RSVP, great, you have less guests to talk – to invite. Yeah. And the ones that will come, they will have to, you know, have to book their accommodation and things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. If you negotiate a discount for them, then they won't feel a bit more pissy that you're forcing them to spend money. Yeah. And generally, they don't think about that. They yeah. just go, oh, my God, this is going to be fun, you yeah. know. It's like a forced holiday. Yeah, exactly. You know, of course we'll come down. <laughs> but that really yeah. depends on the respect that your yeah. friends have for you, the love they have for you. Yeah. They'll make it work mm -hmm. and they should already know how much it's going to cost you yeah. to do this mm -hmm. and they will um, – they will help out and, and fit fit the bill for themselves, yeah. you know. We went to Brisbane last year for a wedding. Wow. Yeah, uh, to ta ta Talangaluma, Tungaluma or something. Oh, it's an that? island just oh. off of Brisbane, the dolphins and stuff. Oh, that was wow. cool. I've never even yeah. heard of that place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and, yeah, we paid for our accommodation, uh, the flights and everything. Mm. We were like, uh, absolutely, we'll go. Yeah. So if, if you have friends that are – keen to, you know, come to a local spot that's yeah. three hours away, Yeah, you know, 
they've, they've like, I'm, I'm keen to go over east, overseas. Yeah. I went to Italy for a yeah. wedding. That's amazing. You know? I'd love to do that. <laughs> I did. I did a bit of a cheeky one with that though, because mm. because I took some photos for them as well. Yeah. There's a bit of a business subsidy there. Yeah. Yeah. Because they asked me to take photos, which meant that I was actually there for a bit of work. Yeah. So that's helpful for tax time. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> <Where> uh, <can't laughs> but yeah, don't worry about don't worry about that. Like, yeah. They will come if they feel bothered. Yeah. They don't like you enough. Yeah. They're Definitely. not worthy of of seeing you on the wedding day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. yeah it's, it it yeah. gets a bit awkward. Any other yeah. awkwardness that you're thinking about? Um, it was mainly just that one. That was the big one. Um, because, yeah, we've we've suggested a Bali wedding, but my dad is very, very afraid of airplanes. No, <laughs> oh, okay. And, yeah, last holiday that we went to, it was over east and that was when I was 16. So. Wow. Yeah, like over 10 years ago so <laughs> yeah Bali would yeah. be cheaper a yes. lot cheaper oh so much cheaper <laughs> so much cheaper but hey yeah gotta do for the ones we love <laughs> yeah but yeah in summary enjoy yeah. it it's your day make sure you talk about contracts with your vendors yeah. mm-hmm. and coordinators are a lifesaver yeah, definitely leaning towards coordinators now. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah. How much better do you feel coming out of this than when you came in? A lot better. Like it's just opened up my mind to so many things that I would have never considered, things I would have never thought of. Like, yeah, especially talking to vendors and asking those important questions and things like that. I feel a lot more at ease, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel a lot more confident and that's for sure. Yeah, Excellent. so thank you so much. <laughs> Excellent. I think this was a good all-round yeah. kind of a thing that will help a lot of brides yeah. to be as well. Yeah, amazing. So, thank okay. you so much. <laughs> hope, you, hope you like the sound of your own voice. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> not so much. <laughs> All right. Um, have any questions, let me know. And, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>